Space.com. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Chelsea Goad with Space.com. How do you hear me? Hi, Chelsea. We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Um, so, Megan and Mark, I have to ask, how has your mission been going so far? What is life on the station like? Well, Chelsea, the mission is going great. Um, we have been up here together for over five months, and um, things are going really well. We've accomplished a lot during the mission, and uh, we're having a lot of fun together as a team. Amazing. So what have been some of the biggest challenges for you both with this mission compared to your previous missions in space? Actually, I'd say compared to my previous mission in space, this has been uh, less challenging because I'm more used to being up here. Um, and, and the work, of course, is just like you can imagine when you show up new to a job, like showing up new to the space station, that first six months learning what to do, even though you come up with a lot of skills, can be really challenging. And now I just finished my second six months. So, or Yeah, I, we did. So it feels that much easier. Um, also, everybody we're working up here is fantastic to live and, and work with. So that's been a true pleasure. Definitely. So, Mark, you're set to possibly make history and spend an entire year in space. What does that mean to you now as you float currently in space? Uh, well, I would say... I'm excited for the team because when we're going to travel further and further away in the solar system, we're going to have to understand how humans react to being in space for longer, longer periods of time. So my hope is that this is just another stepping stone and I fully expect someone to stay in space longer than me um, sometime soon. And I got to clarify, unless you've heard some news that I haven't heard yet, I'm only expecting to stay up here for 355 days, not the 365 days that makes a full year. Definitely. So what has it been like on board the station recently? Because there have been quite a few people on station. Um, recently, a new record was set for the number of people on board. Um, there was the Russian film crew. Has it felt crowded at all? And, and how have those interactions been for you both? Well, you're right, Chelsea. We did have a few extra people here on board. Another Soyuz came up with three crew members and um, the, uh, the two film crew members along with a new cosmonaut. And so those folks have gone home now um, and one of our cosmonauts has left. So we're back to our, our regular seven. We actually didn't see much of them. The work that they were doing was largely conducted on the Russian segment, although um, we're very social creatures. And so, of course, we get together for meals when we can. And we got together a few times. Uh, Oleg had a birthday, so we all got together together for that and we enjoy that social time together and it's kind of nice to see some new faces and hear some new stories. Absolutely. Now the space station seems to be getting busier every day um, <laughs> as we spoke about a bit but it is slowly approaching the end of its tenure in orbit. Uh, recently NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said that he thinks that commercial space stations could one day replace the ISS or support it in orbit. In looking to the future of space stations, currently being on the International Space Station, what would you want to see in a new space station? What aspects of the ISS do you love that you would love to keep? And what could be added or reworked in your opinion? Fantastic question. The space station is a cutting edge laboratory. So I certainly hope that future space stations are cutting edge laboratories as well. As far as something to improve, um, we've got a lot of capabilities up here, both for habitation and work, uh, but they kind of are mixed up all over the place. For example, our sleeping, for the most crew members, our sleeping areas are at a, in the middle of a transportation hub, if you imagine the, a, a highly traveled corridor. Same thing for where someone runs on a treadmill and where someone uh, does some resistive exercise training. So when people are working, they have to get past these people or... Um, so ideally, we'd kind of have a work area and then maybe off t to a far reach of the station, there'd be a place to sleep and maybe all of the exercise equipment would be consolidated and not some place that people have to transit through when they're working. Definitely. Megan, any, anything you would change or keep in a, in a commercial space station? 
Um, well, as Mark said, you know, being able to um, to keep our research capabilities updated and current, we always want to have that. And for sure, we always want to have some beautiful windows to be able to look back at the planet. That's one of our um, our favorite pastimes. Really, when we have downtime, is of course to look at the planet or any planet that we might be uh, orbiting. Um, but also, we we use those photographs um, and we use those capabilities to do research as well. So there's ongoing long-term observations of the Earth that occur that uh, scientists on on Earth will use uh, those data to uh, to do their own research studies. Certainly. Now, Axiom, the company Axiom, just recently passed the preliminary design review for its new commercial module. How do you feel about private additions to the space station as we work toward the future of low Earth orbit? I think it's essential for the future of our space program. Um, we're a government agency, and it's in our best interest to get commercial enterprise to be successful. And we want commercial enterprise to be successful in low Earth orbit so we can maintain this capability that we've spent so much time and effort and money to develop while we invest in traveling further and further away. Definitely. Now, recently, Roscosmos' new Nauka module docked with the space station, and uh, the docking didn't go exactly as planned. I'm curious what that event was like for the both of you. Um, did you feel anything? And are you excited to have a new module at the station, especially a science module? Well, I'll answer your second question first. It's absolutely exciting to have a new module on board the International Space Station. Uh, we were the, in there recently um, bidding farewell to the crew that left, and it was amazing how large that portion of the space station now is. So with that module and then looking, you know, kind of all the way across the Russian segment, um, it's it's almost like having a, a whole other space station. It really, really is large. So that's exciting. It's exciting to see what uh, types of research that they will be carrying out in that new module. Um, as far as the, uh, the day of a arrival went. We knew from when the um, the new module launched that it wasn't responding as expected to uh, ground control commands. And so we were ready um, for something off nominal to happen, um, which didn't happen right away at docking. But in the ensuing time, we did have, as you know, the loss of attitude control. And because we knew that this new module had arrived and, and maybe was having some difficulty with processing commands, we were all kind of ready. We were on alert to respond. And so we all responded, you know, as we were trained to do, we didn't feel any Thing. So before the ISS warning system alerted us to the condition, none of us felt that the space station was tumbling. So there was no discomfort for us. Um, we just we heard the alarm and we responded as we're trained to do, which is we all gather, we contact the ground, we make a plan, um, we follow the procedures to recover that attitude control to make sure that the space station systems are all safe in the process while we do that. And then we let the ground teams figure out what it was that happened. Certainly. Now, looking forward to the remaining time left in both of your missions, are there any things that you're looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to being able to contribute to, to, to continue to serve here on the space station with all the science experiments we're doing. I'm looking forward to, uh, it's really actually a wonderful opportunity for me, like it already has been, to be up here for all this history that's happening with this, this crew that's up here now, with the next crew that's coming up. Um, I've got my previous Soyuz commander is going to be arriving with a, a couple tourists from Japan. All of these things are uh, exciting to me. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variety. We've got spacewalks coming up. Um, so, and I don't have to do any more final exams to get the equivalent of a whole new space flight. <laughs> and. Chelsea, I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most in the last few weeks of our mission is is just the time that we spend together as a crew in this really unique environment. So it's a really special place to live and work. We get to do some amazing things working together and working together with the teams on the ground. And so kind of just cherishing, cherishing what that feels like to be part of this amazing team um, living in this amazing place with this incredible view. Definitely. Now, having both flown to space before, what are your favorite things and least favorite things about both going to space and living in space? My most favorite thing about being in space, I already talked about serving, being able to serve this strong sense of purpose you have when you're up here. Um, 
but honestly, just as a human being, the privilege of having the view we get uh, looking back on the Earth and kind of the perspective that it gives you about how uh, thin our atmosphere is and how important it is for our survival. It's just, it's really where we live on the Earth is in the atmosphere. Um, and my least favorite thing, my least favorite thing is probably the lack of outdoor lighting. Um, we're working in a lab. Uh, if you can, as you look around us, there's windows behind us, but most of our work does not take place near a window. So we're basically kind of, it feels like you're in the basement, lots of outdoor lighting with a beautiful view of, I'm just using um, some analogies. If you can imagine working in a basement with a beautiful view of the Alps behind the boiler. That's kind of what it feels like sometimes to work in the space station. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, I guess some I I agree with Mark. The uh, the view of Earth is is really got to be one of the favorite things. But the other favorite thing I think as a as a scientist is getting to live up here and participate in so many different kinds of research. So I get to do things that I would have never done, um, you know, as a scientist on Earth. So you know, doing different biology experiments, uh, material science experiments, combustion experiments, robotics experiments. You know, we get to participate. We get a small part in a lot of that ongoing research. And there are at any given time does dozens of experiments going on and there will be hundreds of experiments that have occurred you know during our mission so over the next couple of years when these research papers come out and these discoveries are announced you know we'll get to that feeling of hey I helped a little bit with with some of that and that's a pretty cool that's a pretty cool feeling um, for least favorite thing I'm gonna have to go with hygiene I am looking forward to uh, having access to a real uh, operating shower when I get home so unfortunately on earth your hair won't float so you know, pros and cons. Um, uh, you know, looking forward to the future, um, looking forward to Artemis, how do you see the work that's done on the ISS supporting NASA's efforts to return to the, mu to return to the moon with a sustainable human presence? Definitely one of our purposes here on the space station is contributing to exploration. Megan and I are definitely test subjects to help understand better how human bodies react to being in space for extended periods of time. And we've got all kinds of technological demonstrations as well. In fact, uh, we just installed the, uh, the walls to a new toilet recently, and we've got a couple crew members testing that out. So that's a, one example of a new technology that will be essential for traveling further and further into space. Definitely. Now, having lived in space for all this time and done work in space, done science in space, in looking forward to Artemis, what challenges do you think will affect astronauts living on the moon or living in orbit around the moon as they try to push science forward? Well, I think, Chelsea, that they're going to face a lot of the same challenges that we face. Um, so you need you need an operational um, environmental control system, right? So those are kind of the most important things Mark kind of alluded to. But we need a breathable atmosphere. We need power. We need um, water. We need um, food. We need all of those things. And so managing all of those things, making sure that all of that is continues to operate is going to be hugely important. And so having um, equipment that it's very efficient, that's robust, that's easy to to fix when it breaks. That is part of what we do up here in the over 20 years that we've had people living in space, developing those kinds of things that will um, that will make life more, uh, will make it a little easier for folks that are orbiting the moon. They are, are going to be obviously a lot farther away. We're 250 miles. They're going to be close to 250,000 miles. And so that is a big, big difference. And so being able to act autonomously a little bit more than what we do. We, we have wonderful teams around the Earth that, um, that operate the space station and and help us operate the space station. Um, actually, it's probably better to say we help them operate the space station, but crews, as they get farther and farther from Earth, are going to have to be a little bit more autonomous um, and really think through problem solving um, without as many resources what we have. So I think those are going to be some of the challenges um, that they'll face, but the rewards, of course, will be tremendous. Absolutely. Now, I have to ask, um, would either of you ever travel to the moon or even to farther destinations as astronauts? I would absolutely love to go to the moon to help build a permanent human presence on the moon. I would, my hope is that within my lifetime, we're able to look back and talk about how for the past 20 years, we've had a, 
uh, permanent presence on another planetary object, the moon. There's a lot of challenges with going to the moon, like how do you deal with the soil? Uh, we don't have to deal with, with uh, soil and keeping our spacesuits clean for the most part because we don't have that going on. Um, and also to be able to do these extended missions, other planetary objects have lots of resources. So once we have the ability to do some manufacturing with the things we find on the surfaces, then we can really start uh, becoming a species that can travel all over the place. Certainly. Megan? And for me, Chelsea, I think, uh, well, I think any astronaut you ask would say that they would love to go to the moon. They would love to uh, see missions going to Mars. Um, uh, but, you know, for me, my son has basically put his foot down and said, you know what, Mommy, no one's going to space next summer. He's had both parents uh, travel into space in the last year, and I think he's about done with that. So I would need to get some kind of a written waiver, I think, for any uh, future mission. What about <laughs> Uh, on that note, Megan, um, I, if I'm correct, I believe you recently celebrated a birthday in space, and I know that we're coming up on Halloween. Um, I'm curious what that birthday was like for you and what it's like celebrating and celebrating holidays and birthdays in space. Yes, absolutely. I did get to celebrate a birthday up here, which was pretty special. We actually had a uh, cargo vehicle arrive the very same day, so it did feel like I got quite a nice present for my birthday. Um, but yeah, we we did have a, a little dinner party uh, with all of the crew members together. Everybody had um, brought decorations. There were balloons, and um, I had a party hat and uh, all kinds of special food and gifts from my crewmates. So I really was made to feel very special that day. Um, so it is it's hard to be away from home from your loved ones on a special day like that. But we we make it we make it fun together. Um, and I think the other holidays, um, we'll, we'll come up with something for Halloween. I'm not sure yet what exactly that will be, but uh, it is fun to, you know, we kind of take any cause to celebrate. And uh, every every Saturday, it seems like we're um, celebrating somebody's, you know, 300th day in space or year in space or something like that. So that is uh, something that we love to do. And it's an important part of our social life. Definitely. Uh, now, recently, I mean, it seems as if there are more eyes on space than ever, um, with William Shatner launching on a suborbital flight just the other week. Um, it seems that everyone is excited about space. And being on the space station, doing all of this amazing science, uh, how, how would you explain to people why space is important and why the work that's done in space, whether in orbit on the station um, or otherwise, can help us back on Earth? Well, anytime you can take science experiments and change the variables, you learn something new. And the space station provides unique ability to have solutions that where you don't have sedimentation, where you can keep a homogeneous mixture, for example. We, uh, buoyant forces just don't work the same way, so the way combustion works is different. So those particular things, and there's so many, many more examples. But also I'd say space is exciting because we human beings are explorers at our core and we want to understand better how we fit into the vast scheme of things and um, the further we go the more we learn absolutely anything to add megan Well, I think Mark said it very well, and I think, um, you know, the idea that we are explorers, that we're always going to be pushing the boundaries of what we know, it's kind of it's kind of written, you know, into who we are. Um, but along the way, we do learn lots of things, and, and, and some of them are very exciting things, and some of them are maybe more technical things. Um, we get better at manufacturing when we have to build ships that are very robust to a very dangerous environment, for example, and those have benefits to Earth as well. And Mark talked about learning about combustion, which can help you know, spacecraft operate better in, in space, but can also lead to cleaner burning um, engines on the ground. And so, you know, a big reason why we're here is that we are explorers and we have this drive to do it, but also a big reason why we're here is that it does benefit the rest of humanity and, and those on Earth. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for all of your time and for answering my questions so wonderfully. Thanks for joining us. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from space.com. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>